What's up, everyone? This is Ben Alonzo from ultratechlife.com with a pretty cool Hamcation 2023 video. I got the chance to get out here. I can't believe it's another year, another day, another ham fest. So this is the second largest ham fest in the U.S. that takes place at the Central Florida Fairgrounds in Orlando, Florida. Typically, in the beginning of February, this one was the 10th, 11th, and 12th. I am a busy professor at multiple colleges, running a tech company, and now business partners with four Orlando restaurants, so I had no sleep. I was carrying 45 pounds of camera gear for over three hours and had some audio problems, but did the best that I could. So a lot of cool scenes here. It's an indoor-outdoor event. I always love going to this because it reminds me of how cool it was when I became a ham radio operator as a kid in 1994. After that, being a no-code tech, I went to advanced class and it was just always learning about new and used equipment, antennas, communications theory, and then going to these ham fests and actually seeing the equipment. Most of it, which I could never afford, is now totally awesome to just see the latest and greatest technology out there. These big computer screen, VHF, UHF, digital radios. Lots of cool stuff. Every part you can think of, the MFJ equipment was really cool. Again, reminds me of when I built my first antenna and just all the parts that you would need for that, the coax line, the BNC connectors, PL259 connectors. And again, just to see the latest and greatest technology out there with all the software radio and now things could be USB connected, larger displays, digital displays and that, they look really cool. And again, it's such a neat hobby to witness how this has advanced over the several decades that I've seen it. And it's not just the new stuff, it's the old stuff. I'm a big fan of antique radios and nostalgia and just World War II history. So when I see console radios or stuff from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, I always geek out over that stuff. So it was really cool seeing that. And again, everything you can think of just reminded me of amplifiers and SWR meters, weather stations and that. I always try to find from the biggest, again, ICOM, Yesu, HRO, HRO, always at these ham fests, the latest and greatest things. It is a all around the world people come catering, tailgating event, so you meet people from all over the place. And again, just really cool to see so much in one place all at once it's overwhelming so it does take several days to look through this stuff and you never know what you'll find there again i'm a big history and antique radio fan so i love thinking that this old stuff at one point was the latest and greatest stuff just reminds me of console radios and civil defense era stuff and it's just really neat to see all of that Morse code was another thing that I got into as a kid. I got up to, I think I'm still at 20, 30 words per minute. Even though I don't use it, it was cool to play around with that. So cool to see this stuff be hands-on. I'm a computer science and earth science professor, so I geek out around all of this stuff. So it's overwhelming to see all this in one building. I wish it was longer and bigger than what it is. I didn't even have time to get anything to drink or eat, but I hear the stuff was great there from other people. I tried to go into every booth that I could, indoors and outdoors. Just really cool stuff. Reminds me also of all the times I've had to find storm chasing equipment and mounts and connectors and trunk lip mounts, all of that stuff. It's really cool to see vendors also that I've known for decades, whether they've helped me with the storm chasing and that. Also cool to see the prevalence of RTL, SDR stuff. I have articles on that online. Here's a company that... I worked with years ago. They sponsored some of my storm chasing. I'm also a meteorologist, big into storm chasing since the 90s. They sent me an ultimeter station. It was very cool to use that. Nice to see them there. I'm a big weather geek, being a meteorologist, so I absolutely love seeing them there. Speaking of geek, I'm also a pilot. I love aviation, so any trade show I go to, I try to find aviation-related stuff, and I ran into Brian from ADSB Exchange. Exchange. Uh, we are a flight tracking group. Um, off the shelf, uh, hardware like SDRs and 
raspberry pies to form a network of 8,600 plus theaters. So, um, aviation enthusiasts love our site, obviously, but we are actually doing a lot of really cool and interesting things with the data and doing a lot of good. Um, for example, we work with a group called Singapore ABS, which uh, investigates um, world crimes and works with the media to break major news stories. Uh, we work with search and rescue groups. We work with health fire and firefighting. Uh, we work with the NTSB nerf. Um, but all you do is you take these, the pre real feeder comes with it, but if you have one of the SDRs, you download an image from our website, you put it on the Brian tells us it's pretty easy to get involved. You get one of these USB dongles, you load the software on it, you register with the website, you can become one of several thousand people to get involved and share data, and it's a really cool hobby to kind of explore. Not just if you're into aviation, but really just to mess around with the SDR equipment and to kind of see what you can do on your own. Be a part of something. It's actually pretty cool. So thanks, shout out to Brian there and ADSB Exchange for that interview. Another cool thing that I got into years ago, which was kind of difficult, is designing space station and space communication antennas for satellites. So when we talk about vertical and horizontal polarization, it was kind of cool to run into Randy Berger from Eris to talk about some space station stuff. Booth here is the amateur radio on the International Space Station. Today we're kind of demonstrating and showing the capabilities that we have for amateur radio operations. The grant from NASA uh, can help with uh, the student mission control. It's actually virtual mission control. And uh, we are building that out jointly with uh, Berkeley University and ARIS here. Uh, my team, I'm the uh, director of engineering for ARIS. Uh, I have a team that's building out the capabilities for uh, the sensors on the International Space Station. So we have 12 new sensors going up on the space station, and some pretty kind of basic sensors that we're using right now. One is in the Columbus map, and one is in the Russian segment. Uh, both of them are using uh, dual band radios, uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So, so basically, we have Voice communication is going on over in the U.S. side today. As the international space station is searching, everybody else on the ISS are putting their SDR capabilities, so we have are able to receive any type of frequency. Randy says it's pretty easy to get into this. There's also educational opportunities for educators to maybe inspire some students into the STEM field. You might have a chance to have, let your class speak with the space station using ham radio equipment. Check out their website. So I'm very glad, as busy as I was, with no sleep and a hurt neck after three and a half hours of carrying 45 pounds of camera equipment around. It was very neat. And I also try to find unique things. Every ham fest has one or two things, and I actually found a couple of them. So the first thing was this really cool car. The practicality, I don't know of it, but I just if my generation ever gets a chance to retire, I can imagine having this thing, camping, and then talking around the world. I can't imagine using it with storm chasing, getting that under an overpass into a garage, or getting hit by lightning by that big lightning rod thing on the top of that. But the whole car is so packed full of radio gear, there's no space for any passengers, so the driver's area, the passenger side, the trunk, everything is full of radio equipment. Very cool stuff, faceplate mounted everywhere. The cable management is always interesting for me to see that with the antenna setup and the power management that goes all the way into the trunk with this car. Again, something cool I could see myself in at some point and when I get out of aviation or all the other hobbies I have, but it's cool to see that. We also saw a UFO at Hamcation. No ordinary UFO though, and I laughed at this because I've actually been to this store, Skycraft Parts, to find some obscure part years ago. Yeah. So this was pretty cool to go to. Shout out to the Hamcation staff there for the media pass. I absolutely love coming to this thing. It's going to happen again in 2024. If you're ever in Orlando, check it out. And again, if you like science and tech stuff, once I'm not so busy, I'm going to start posting more stuff. So check out the Twitter, Facebook, and ultratechlife.com. And thank you for watching.